So since I've decided to take my herd to another level with owning our own buck and trying this year to obtain milking stars for all of our does by doing milk testing, I decided I need some legit pictures of these goats uh, for my website. So we're gonna take you along and show you how difficultly fun it is to try to get pictures of baby goats. Ethan and Lydia have gathered them up and we're gonna try. Oh, are you mad Tilly? Is yeah. Doris bullying you? Get him against the wall. Ethan, you move his butt over and get him per perfectly parallel. Like that. Okay, ready? Can you pull it out of him right now? Yeah. You are one fat Stella goat. Just scratch him and get him to get in a daze. Ready, go. trying to eat my fingers. Okay, hold your finger up then. Hold your finger up. All right, you might be hard. Ready, set, go. Good job, Wally. There we go. Okay. Okay, Daisy, you can do it. What's going on? Come on, Daisy. Oh, she's going too far this way. It would be better if you had been backed up a lot more. Ready? Ready, set, go. Okay, come on, Winnie, you can do it. He likes to be dead. Ready, set, go. Okay, try it one more time. That was pretty good, but let's get her legs, uh, she kind of puts her legs together. We want her legs spread out a little bit. Ready, set, go. Okay, so we want her to stand really well, and she kind of looks like a hunchback right now. So, see how her legs are all... <laughs> okay, ready? What is she doing? I don't know why she's standing like that. Okay, ready, set, go. That actually wasn't that hard. It helps when you have two teenagers that are willing to scratch goats. Let's see if he'll let us scratch him. All right, we decided we're gonna try the buckling. Why do I keep calling him the buckling, guys? I don't know. Zorro. Oh, hey, what are you doing? He wants food. He knows. Oh, Maybe he's we not going to stay there for a yeah, second. Let, let's feed him the bottle then. That's fine. <laughs> Except he stands really horrible. I can like lift it up. Okay. You, like it? you gotta, you gotta. Hold it up really high. It looks like a giraffe. Lydia, hold it up really high. See it's fine, it's fine. She's got photos on her website. I'm going to use Crystal's photos. It's fine. Too. All right, that's good. Should we feed it now? Okay guys, it's time to make the final decision on which baby goats we're going to keep. I thought I'd lay out for you guys the pros and cons of each baby goat, and then you can help us decide and vote in the poll down in the description below. First up is Tatum. As you guys know, her mom is Tilly, and her dad is Moonrider. Now, I fell in love with Tatum right away because she was just adorable. I mean, come on. Tatum's kind of slouching in this picture, but she actually has really beautiful overall structure. So I could see her really turning into an amazing doe, especially if we bred her with Zorro. I think together they would make some really beautiful babies and possibly some even better milking lines. The only downside with Tatum is that Tilly has been a bit of a wild card. <laughs> Tilly was a difficult baby to raise, and she had just this crazy personality that we could never really contain. And then when Tilly first freshened, she rejected one of her babies, so we weren't sure if she was gonna be a good mom. Although Tilly's kind of redeemed herself, not only on the milking stand, but in being a mom to Fern from last year and Tatum from this year. Next up is Duke. His mom is Doris and his dad is Moonrider. Now, we don't normally keep any of the bucklings, but we are considering this year keeping one of the boys to weather and keep as a companion for Zorro. So Duke is in the running for that. Duke is Kevin's favorite and he's slowly becoming one of my favorites. He's got some cool coloring. Really, we're just looking for personality when it comes to keeping a baby goat as just a weather or a castrated male. We're not looking for any of their lines because we're not gonna pass that line on, but we're just looking to see if they are agreeable, friendly, easy to be around, not too mischievous. He's a pretty cute one. Next up is Daisy. 
Now she is the Doling from Doris and Moonrider. The benefit with Doris is that she has a really great utter attachment and arch. So it's possible that Daisy could end up becoming a good milker because she has Moonrider's nice milking lines. But Doris isn't that great of a milker. She's super sweet on the stand personality wise, but she has more tissue than she has volume of milk. Daisy and Zorro would make an interesting combination. So if we kept Daisy, that would be kind of fun to see. Next up is Winston. Now he is the buckling of Willow and Moonrider. He's also in the running to keep as a weather here on the farm. He's got some beautiful coloring. I love his little spotted coloring, it's so cute. And he really does have a sweet personality. Next up is Wally. Now Wally is also another buckling from Willow and Moonrider. Wally's just got a little bit different coloring. He's a quiet little buckling, but he's not super friendly. So that's the only downside with him. I've had a few people suggest that we keep either Wally, Winston, or Duke as another buck on the farm to be able to breed back to the does here that they're not related to but I don't think that we can have two bucks on our one acre property. I think that's definitely pushing it. So we're gonna settle with the idea of keeping Zorro as our main buck for now, and then one of these boys from this year as a companion weather for him. Finally, we have Winnie. Winnie is the last doling from Willow and Moonrider. Winnie's super petite, and she's a little bit narrow in her stature, so I'm not sure how she's gonna turn out as an adult. Willow is producing an amazing amount of milk, has a little bit of a loose udder attachment, but has a nice big udder, and Penny, as you guys know, who is Winnie's grandma, has been an amazing star milker for us for years. The only downside with Penny is that she has a leg deformity that we're hoping isn't gonna get passed down through Willow's line to Winnie. She's super sweet though, just adorable, just like Willow was as a little baby. And her and Zoro would make some really cute babies as well. When it comes to keeping baby goats, I know a lot of you have wanted us to keep all of them, but because our ultimate goal is always to provide the best mini milkers for other families, we want to make sure and keep the best of each kidding season. So while it would be fun to keep all of them, we really want to keep the absolute best ones of the bunch. I know it's such a hard decision, but we'll go ahead and post in the description the poll and you guys can vote for your favorites. So we just got our solar panels turned on. They were kind of backed up with the whole virus thing. And Kevin is excited, so he's gonna spray them all off so they work perfectly. There's not gonna be a speck of dust on these things. Okay, Lydia. Got it. Well, Lydia, this is the first tree that we ever planted. We did it wrong. It's crooked. We planted it too deep and we probably need to dig it out and replant it, but it's making peaches, so <laughs> we succeeded on some level. So I felt this and it felt, oh my gosh, so Ooh, ready. Yeah. So I wanted to hurry and get them before they like fermented on the tree. Can I grab this one? Yeah. So I put these little bird, well they're not bird bags, they're called organza party bags. <laughs> and, oh, oh look. Bugs? How? Did we trap the bugs in there with them? I think this one may have already been eaten by bugs a little bit. But is that one ready? Yep. Okay, go for it. Our first. Go for it. All like dirty, like. Yeah, just do it. We're we're rough, we're roughing it today. Okay, got it. Okay. That's really good. <laughs> it is really it's good. So sweet. Oh my word. Well, we picked about half of them. Those are the ones that are ripe. So, Plus the one I ate, of course. Yeah. So not too shabby for our shabby little tree. We've also got another peach right here that has a lot more on it. And I think we planted this one correctly years ago because it's growing pretty well. Looks really good. But this one isn't going to be ready for a few more weeks. Sometimes you got to kill a bunch of trees in order to have things survive. So hopefully I've gotten past the beginner stage and we actually can start producing more fruit on the farm. Do you need a new hose or is this your misting system at the same time? Yeah. It's looking good though, Kevin. 
We're gonna be 100% solar soon. Once we get this up and running and Kevin can look at all the specs and all the little details that I know some of you are interested in, he will share that. Right now we're just trying to make sure that everything's set up correctly and working. <sighs> Hopefully uh, this summer we can just be powered from all of our solar panels. I think these ones you just throw on top. Oh yeah. Like it just floats on the top. Yeah. And then these these two get planted in the or all actually all three get planted in the bottom. So Alrighty then. So yeah, each bunch you're just gonna try your best to bury. I got these things called giant hygro and these really help uptake the ammonia in the pond and they're oxygenators. The website said one for every square foot surface of your pond, yeah. <laughs> which would be way too many because <laughs> our pond's like a thousand square feet. So yeah, I would say just stick them all around the edge. We have tons of snails in our bog, which eats up the algae, but they're still dormant right now. We're waiting on them to perk up here and then this whole bog gets cleaned up. This area where we keep the plants, where the filtering happens, tends to get more algae than normal because it's shallow, it's got a lot of heat in there. We're just always trying to add plants in here and cover everything up and shade things, and oxygenate things and filter things. We've probably got at least 30 different varieties of plants in here. So for those of you that don't know, this bog has three feet deep of rock that houses all of our bacteria. And then we've got the thing covered in plants and which filters the water. And then it heads down the waterfall and goes to our main swimming area. Thank you guys for watching today's video and thank you for helping us hit 500,000 subscribers. Make sure to go vote on your favorite baby goat. If you want to watch the video where these cute baby goats were born, click here.